Okay, so it's still just the two of you. How was your homework last from last week? It was pretty easy. Easy, yeah, I thought so. Eason, what did you think? Yeah, easy. Okay. Yeah, you guys, you guys, that was a, a, a big review for you. Okay, well, you know, you're here on time and it's 103, so I'm gonna get started, okay, folks? So here's what we have planned today. This is our second lesson, Intro to Algebra. Uh, the big thing that we're dealing with is we'll be adding and subtracting polynomials and evaluating algebraic expressions. I have a feeling this is gonna be another review for you. Oh, I see. Oh, it's a national day for the states, okay. So that explains why some people aren't here, right? Well, they can watch the recorded video. We might be out celebrating doing outdoor things. Okay, we'll get started. Let's get some terminology. Um, let's talk about some terminology first, okay? So this entire thing here, it's just an example. It's called a term. Now, which numbers represent the exponents? By the way, there are only two people here. Maybe you can turn on your mics if you, if you feel okay with that. Amanda, which numbers make up the exponents? Two and three. Correct. And Eason, what are the variables? X and Y. Yep, X and Y make up the variables. And then lastly, the coefficient is, Amanda? Four. Yeah, the four. Okay, so please, it sounds like you guys know those terms, but they're really important because when your teacher talks about coefficients, exponents, variables, you have to know what they're referring to. Okay, so once again, this is a term. When you add and subtract terms, what you get is a polynomial, more or less. Okay, so let's just make sure you have the, co the terminology correct. Amanda, you can answer the first one. Given the term negative one over six y cubed, what's the coefficient? One over six. Correct. Oh, actually try again. It's almost correct. Or negative one over six. Yeah, negative one over six. And what about the variable, Eason? Uh, y. Yep, and then uh, Eason, once again, the exponent is? Three. Oh, great, Alan, welcome. Alan, we're just going over some terminology for starters, okay? Um, okay, yeah, so when we have a term, we have what's called the coefficient. That's the number that's being multiplied by the variable or variables. We have the exponents. The variables are the letters. Okay, given the term negative Q squared, which of the following statement, statements is false? A, the coefficient is two. B, the coefficient is negative one. C, the variable is Q. Which of those three statements is false? Let me know in the chat, okay? Which is false, A, B, or C? And Alan, if you can put your response as well, okay? Yeah, you all chose A and you're correct. Now look, I made this question just so that you practice the terminology, but I have to say it was a weird way of phrasing the question, wasn't it? But you're all right. The coefficient is two, that is false. 
The coefficient in this example is, anyone let me know in the chat? Negative one. Or yeah, you can use your mics as well, that's easy. Yeah, negative one is the coefficient. Look, the number being multiplied by the variable. I don't see the one, I just see a negative. It's actually a negative one. Okay, good. All right, folks, so polynomials, like I mentioned before, are formed by adding or subtracting terms. And you have to also remember polynomials have positive, the, very, the exponents are always um, whole numbers rather, okay? So if your polynomial has one term right here, there's a, oopsie, hate when that happens. You guys can say it out loud or you can use your um, chat. You might not know the term. Officially, it's called a monomial. Monomial. Mono meaning one from the Greek root. So monomial is a polynomial with one term. What is the name of a polynomial that has two terms like this one right here? The first term is x squared plus or minus, in this case, minus 5y. What do we call that polynomial? Any guesses? Starts with the B. Binomial. A polynomial that has two terms is called a binomial. Do you know what a polynomial with three terms is called? like this one right here, here's an example. Remember, terms are separated by either a plus or a minus. Trinomial. Nice. Trinomial. Okay, so let that sink in. When a polynomial has more than three terms, we don't bother giving it a name, or at least I'm not aware of the name. It's not important. But monomial, binomial, and trinomial, those names are commonly used. So I want you to be aware of those, okay? But don't worry. If it has four or more terms, you just refer to it as a polynomial. Okay, which of the following polynomials is a trinomial? Tri meaning three terms. Oh, I gave you too many hints. Let me know in the chat, okay? A, B, or C, which of those polynomials is a trinomial? Yep, Alan, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, very nice. This is a trinomial. A is an example of a binomial. C is an example of a monomial. Good. Which of the following is a trinomial that has a constant of negative four. Now I didn't tell you what a constant is, but you might know. So let me know in the chat, which of those trinomials has a constant of negative four? Which trinomial has a constant of negative four? Oh, did you guys say the answer? Or was that the previous answer? Yeah, okay. I'm not sure if this is, yeah, you're correct, Easton. I'm not sure, Alan, if you replied to this or the previous question, I but you're right. Oh, okay, yeah, it was the same. It was B as well, just like the previous one. That kind of threw me off. Yeah, you guys are right. Look, B is the only one that is a trinomial for starters. And here is my constant. A constant is a term that doesn't have a variable. It's just a number, okay? And we call it a constant because Negative four will remain negative four always. It never changes. It doesn't vary. It's always negative four. Okay. One sec. Uh, 
Um, let's talk about like terms. Okay, so here are some examples. Terms are called like terms. Like 5a and a are like terms. 4xy, 10xy, those are like terms. Negative 6, xy to the 4, and xy to the 4 are like terms. In contrast, 5a and a squared are not like terms. 4xy, 10xyz, not like terms. Negative 6, xy to the 4, and x to the 4y, those are not like terms. So maybe you've seen the pattern. Actually, I haven't written it here. So maybe you can tell me in your own words, what makes two terms like terms? You can use your mic for this. Oh, you know what, guys, I can't see your faces. That's the problem. You might be holding your hand up and I can't see you. Sorry about that. Tell me in words, for two terms to be like terms, what must be true? What are the characteristics? Um, there are like two terms? terms that can be combined together to become one term. You're right, they can be combined with addition and subtraction. That's true. But what is it that makes 5a and a? So what is it that makes these two terms like terms, but these ones are not? Amanda, do you want to try? You can just give me a partial answer. I can finish it off if you get stuck. Um, there are terms that have the same um, variables and powers. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Look, so for example, let me just clear this for a sec. For example, 5a and a, they have different coefficients, but we're, we don't care about the coefficients. When it comes to like terms, it's exactly what Amanda said. Look, both of these terms have the same variable, namely a, and the exponent on the a is a one, in this case, an invisible one. And that's the case for all like terms. They have the same variables raised to the same exponents. Look at these examples here. Negative six, x, y to the four and x, y to the four. They both, both of these terms have x's, both of them have y's. The exponent on the x's is the same, it's one. The exponent on the y is also the same, it's four. Is that clear everyone? Yeah, okay, good. And then who was it? Was it Alan? Who, who was it that said we can combine like terms by adding and subtracting that, that sort of idea? I think that was me. Alan, was it you? Yeah, and that's exactly right. Uh, before we move on, do you guys have access to, can you annotate on my screen? No? Ethan, what about you? I can. Was that Alan speaking? How come I can't see Alan? Yes. Oh, hi, Alan. There you are. Yeah, Alan, can you circle the like terms? The rest of you just think about it. For question A, which are the like terms? I can do it now, too. Okay, thanks, Amanda. You'll do B, okay? Wait, do I circle like two of them or do I only circle one? Yeah, you would have to have two or more. Okay.
Remember everyone to be like terms, the terms have to have the same variables or letters and the exponents on the corresponding letters have to be the same. Now I made this tricky on purpose. I actually put this question on a test in, in a grade nine test for my students. Ellen, do you want me to take over? Uh, sure. Sure. Amanda, did you want to try this one, the first one? Can I do the second one? Sure, you can do the second one. Then I'll walk you guys through the first one. Okay, so I'm looking at the first term. I see variables A and B. I have A cubed, B cubed. So I'll look at each of the other terms and see if I have an A cubed, B cubed. I do not. So this does not have a like term. Looking at the second term, I have a squared b, a squared b. Look at the other two terms, this one and this one, and see if one of them has an a squared b. I'm not interested in the number, the coefficient. I'm only interested in a squared b. And it turns out, look, a squared b and this term are like terms. Both of these terms have an a squared, see that? And both of them have a B. Look, B is the same thing as B to the exponent one, right? Okay, so the answer is the two middle terms are like terms. Does that make sense now? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, Amanda, you can see if you can do the next one. So far, so good. I was actually being sneaky. You're correct. These two terms are like terms. Looking at this term right here, 4xy all over z to the negative 1. Here's the thing, everyone. z to the negative 1 can be, exp you, can, you can write this as this. Look, 4xy, you can move the z into the numerator. We won't get into that too much now. But these are equivalent. I just tried to trick people with this z to the negative one. Maybe I'll take over here. Look, 4xy z to the negative one can be rewritten like this. 4xy over z to the negative one is the same thing as one over z. Okay, now I have 4xy divided by one over z. divided by one over Z, which is equal to four X Y. When I'm dividing fractions, I turn the division into multiplication and I take the reciprocal of this second fraction. Okay, do you all see that? So this becomes four X Y Z. Is that okay? Yeah, so you did well, Amanda, by noticing the first two were like terms. I tried to trick you. Look, I reversed the order. I put X, Y, Z, and then I put Z, Y, X. The order of the letters doesn't matter. Those variables are being multiplied, and we know that multiplication is, what's that word I'm looking for? What word lets us know that it doesn't matter the order that you multiply two or more things? Associated? You're actually thinking commutative, okay? So A times B is the same thing as B times A. Okay, good stuff. So let's move on. Okay, let's actually simplify some expressions. So keep in mind, the order that we add and add things doesn't matter. So in the first example, and I'll, I'll do this, okay? Keep in mind the following. We can add and subtract like terms. For starters, I'm gonna put the like terms next to each other. Be careful, this is a negative four Z. The coefficient is negative four, okay? So that goes wherever that term is. This is a plus nine Z, minus two Z. And then I have plus eight plus four. I just rearranged my terms. It's not necessary to do this step, but for now, I'll do that, okay? 
Look, now I'm going to combine the following terms. These are like terms. I'm underlining the like terms. Negative 4z plus 9z minus 2z. You can simplify that. You do negative 4 plus 9, which is 5, minus 2, which is 3. So this simplifies to 3z. And then look, I can also combine the constants. Positive 8 plus 4. Oops. One sec, sorry. Okay, so that's how we simplify that polynomial. But let me show you everyone, watch. You don't have to do, see how I did that middle step? I usually don't bother. I just acknowledge what the like terms are. I'll add negative 4z plus 9z minus 2z. What's that? Oh, did I make a mistake in the last question? I forget what I wrote. Okay, negative 4 plus 9, that's positive, not, positive 5. Positive 5 minus 2. 3z. No, I didn't make a mistake. I'm okay. And then these are like terms as well. The 8, these are my constants. I can combine the constants. Constants are like terms. 8 plus 4 is positive 12. Are you guys familiar with that? Yeah? Is that very simple for you? Yeah? Okay. Um, do the next question. If there's someone that can annotate, that would be great. The next question involves first opening up the brackets using the distributive property, okay? Who would like to do that one on the screen? Thanks, Amanda. If it's not too hard to annotate, I'm not sure what it's like for you guys. I'm kind of lucky I have a, a touch screen. Yes, very nice. Good, so whenever you have a question like this, you first open up your brackets using the distributive property, then you collect your like terms, very good. Okay, why don't you guys try to do this question on a piece of paper, and then you'll let me know whether the answer is A, B, or C. Actually, I should do the question as well. I shouldn't take it for granted that you know how to do this. So just in case you don't, watch. Um, first, I have to do three times everything in the brackets. So I'll be using the distributive property. And then here in front of the second brackets, it's actually a negative one. So multiply negative one by each of the terms in the second brackets. You guys will let me know. Oh, sorry, Ellen, I didn't see that message. Uh, we can fit together two terms. Okay. Let me know in the chat, is the answer to this question A, B, or C? I'm going to write the question over here.
Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Ellen. Okay, so all three of you think it's B. You're probably right. Let me just do this question. So using the distributive property, I get 3x squared minus 9x plus 12. Distributive property, negative 1 times each of the terms. So negative 2x squared minus 5x. Careful. A negative 1 times a negative 1 is positive 1. Got it. Gather my like terms. I don't physically like to move the terms so that they're next to each other. I find that useless. So I just acknowledge either in my head or you can even underline if that helps you. 3x squared minus 2x squared. So 3 minus 2 is 1. I'm left with 1x squared. Instead of writing 1x squared, we just write x squared. It's not wrong to say 1x squared to write the 1. It's just not necessary. Okay, this negative 9x and this negative 5x, they can be combined. Those are like terms. Negative 9 minus 5 is negative 14x. And then lastly, I've got the positive 12 plus 1. Those are my constants. 12 plus 1 is 13. And you guys are very right. It's B. Okay, don't mind my dog, everyone. Does anyone here have a dog? No? Would you like to have a dog one day? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, this one's a little blurry, but do this on paper as well and let me know what you get. Oh, Amanda, you don't want a dog? <laughs> I never wanted a dog when I was your age. I was afraid of dogs, but now I like them. Oh, that would, yeah, that would make you nervous around dogs for sure. When you're new at math, it's okay to be slow, but try to get fast at doing questions, okay? And you will, naturally, the, you'll be so fast at these. I'm sure you already are. Okay, so I have two, oh, actually I have three Ds. Everyone here thinks that the answer is D. Let me just uh, do the solution, okay? So for anyone that's watching at home. Well, I have to open up the first brackets. What number is being multiplied by everything in the brackets? What number is here in front of the brackets? It's a one, right? Okay, so multiplying everything in the brackets by one would not change what's in the brackets. So I'll just rewrite that, removing the bracket. Okay, uh, in front of these second brackets, I have a negative one. Now you don't see the one, but it's there, it's invisible. So I do negative one times each of the terms in the second brackets. And I'm left with negative one times negative seven X to the four, negative one times negative seven, that's positive seven X to the four. Negative one times negative five is positive five. Negative one times negative nine X, positive nine X. Now gather your like terms. Remember, we can add and subtract like terms. Uh, you know what? It's customary to, 
it's customary to go in decreasing order of exponents. So I'm going to deal with the x to the 4 terms first. So negative 5x to the 4 plus 7x to the 4 is 2x to the 4. And what else? Do I have any other terms? Yes, I have the negative 7x can be combined with this positive 9x. That gives me 2x, right? And then I've got my constants. 5 plus 5, which is 10. Did I get B? Oh, D oh no, you guys got D. And so did I. Good. We're all right. Okay, let's keep practicing this. Do this one as well, guys. Maybe try to do it as quickly as you can, because I think this is pretty straightforward for you. Okay, so most of you said A. I'm going to go ahead and see if you guys are right. So in front of the first brackets, I have a 1. I'll multiply everything in the brackets by 1. That doesn't change what's in the brackets. Second brackets, everything has to be multiplied by the negative 1. So I get negative x squared minus 2x. The third bracket has an invisible 1 in front of it. To remove those brackets, do the distributive property. Multiply each of the terms by positive 1. So nothing changes, right? Okay, gather your like terms. Start with the terms with an x squared. So this one, this one, and this one. Let's see, I have 2 minus 1 plus 3. 2 minus 1 plus 3. In the order you do that doesn't matter. You can do 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. So I have a 4x squared. Notice when we add and subtract like terms, the exponents don't change, right? Keep that in mind. Next. Um, Let's combine all of the x terms. So 3x minus 2x and then minus 4x. 3x minus 2x is 1x. 1x minus 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3x. You guys all said A and you're correct. Do you guys have any questions up to now? You seem to be understanding this perfectly. Okay, so, you know, we're, we're just practicing adding and subtracting polynomials. So let me give you this question, which basically comes down to adding and subtracting polynomials. But I phrased it in a slightly different way. Write an expression for the perimeter in simplest form. You can use a capital P for perimeter. Do you guys remember what perimeter means? Yeah? Okay, the perimeter is the distance around an object.
That was really fast, Ellen and Amanda. Eason, how are you doing? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and- Yeah, I can't and figure it out. Okay, then watch this. Okay, so to determine, they, thank you for your honesty, by the way. That's what you, you guys always have to remember that. Look, there is no shame in having questions. You're students, you should have questions. You always let your teacher know when you're unsure, okay? Never try to fake knowing something. It's, it's, it's just not gonna help you in any way. And look, even teachers don't know everything, right? You know that. Okay, so um, to find the perimeter of this rectangle, I need to add all of the side lengths. So this length right here is X minus 12. So I can do X minus 12. I can use brackets if I want. Plus this length right here, which is X. I won't bother using brackets for that. Plus this length right here, which is equal to X minus 12. Plus this length last length or this last side, which is has X units. So now let's go ahead. P equals, yeah, I like that, Amanda. I'll show that next. I like that. Okay, so open up the brackets. There's a one in front of the first bracket. So one times X is X plus one times negative 12 is negative 12. Just opening up my brackets, okay? Now that's an expression for the perimeter, but it's not simplified. The question wants us to simplify. So we simplify this by combining like terms. I have one X plus one X plus one X plus one X. One plus one plus one plus one is four. And don't forget the X. Constants, negative 12 minus 12 is negative, tw uh, sorry, negative 24. Okay, did it. And don't forget your units. Well, the question doesn't specify if we're dealing with centimeters, kilometers, meters, whatever. So we'll just put units. Not units squared. This is not the area. This is perimeter, just units like that. I'll show you what Amanda did. Uh, Eason, is that okay, by the way? Yes. Okay, good stuff. So I'll show you what Amanda did. Amanda remembered that the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle is two times length plus two times width. Well, two times the length, the length, let's just assume it's X minus 12 plus two times the width, which is X. Use the distributive property, two times X is two X minus 24 plus two X. Combine your like terms. Units. Yeah, when the question doesn't tell you like if it's centimeters or meters or uh, miles, whatever, you just write units for perimeter. Okay, so that was neat. I like that. I think Amanda's way was a little faster. Okay, try this everyone. You're doing really well. I gather this is mostly a review for you, but you know it doesn't hurt to re review these concepts. Um, okay, so let's read the question. The length of a particular rectangle is five centimeters longer than its width. Write an algebraic expression in simplified form for the perimeter of this rectangle. Okay, whenever you're given a word problem, it always helps if you can sketch a diagram. So let me just do that here on the side. Oops. Do my, okay. There we go. I'm gonna let you guys figure this out, but let me just give you a hint. The length is five centimeters longer than the width. So the length is given in terms of the width. Do the following, let X be the width and specify your units in centimeters. Okay, so now you go ahead and try to do the rest of this question. And there he goes again.
Okay, that was pretty fast. Um, Mend, I'll give you another minute to try to do this, okay? Yeah, very nice, everyone. I'll do the question, I'll do the solution. So because I'm using an X, once you introduce a variable, once you start using a variable, you have to take the time and do what I did here. You have to introduce your variable. And you can say, let X be, let X represent. I find the word represent way too long. So I just say, let X be the width, indicate your units centimeters. The length is five centimeters longer than the width. So I can express the length as X plus five. Okay, so now I'm ready to compute the perimeter. I'm gonna use this formula, it seems to be a little faster. Two times the length, which is X plus five, plus two times the width, which is X. By the way, why do I bother doing a cursive L? I always do a cursive L in math. Alan? Uh, to make it not mixed up with multiplication. To make it not mixed up, not with multiplication, but with the number one. Yeah? Okay. So I get 2x plus 10, oopsie, plus 2x. And it's exactly what you guys said, 4x plus 10. But this time the units are specified. So I'm going to go ahead and say centimeters. Nice. Very nice. Always draw a sketch for a word problem. Okay. It helps. It actually has been studied and it actually helps with uh, processing math, okay? Okay, let's imagine the width of a particular rectangle is X meters, got it. If the length of the rectangle is three more than twice the width, which of the following algebraic expressions represents the length? Let me know in the chat, okay? You guys are choosing C so far. Let me do this question. Um, okay, so X represents my width. The length is three more. That means plus three. Three more means plus three. Then twice the width. Twice means two times. So twice the width is 2X. I get twice the width, 2X, three more than that, plus three. So you're right if you chose C, okay? Very nice. Mm, let's keep going. Oh yeah, these types of questions. In your textbook, it'll ask you to do these questions. So for this particular example, it wants you to do two things. First, it wants you to simplify the algebraic expression by combining your like terms, adding and subtracting them, and then evaluate given that x is equal to negative two, y is equal to five. Let me see if you guys know how to do this. Work on A. First simplify, then evaluate. That's what the question wants you to do, okay? Oops, what's that? Go away.
Nice. Very nice, everyone. Okay. So yeah, don't forget, you could evaluate right, right from the beginning, but the question wants us to simplify first. So collect those like terms. 8x plus x is 9x. Negative 4y minus 6y plus 3. So that's negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7y. Okay. Now I'm going to evaluate 9x. That means 9 times x. X, I'm told, has a value of negative 2. So I write 9 times negative 2, I'll use brackets, minus 7 times y. Well, y, we are told, is 5. Okay, so negative 18 minus 35, and I'll just assume you guys are correct, is negative 53. Nice. What about b? Can you guys do that one? It's the same type of question. Thanks, Alan. And I like that you put a question mark because you're not 100% sure. Yeah, Mint and Alan, you guys got the same answer. So you're probably right. But let me just emphasize something, everyone. Are you, when you do your solutions, like on a test, for example, or even for your homework, you want to get into good habits. So make sure you're using equal signs like I am. So you'll get one mark from your teacher just for showing the simplifying step. Now let's do the substitution. Let's evaluate. Anywhere I see an X, I'm going to put the value negative two. Now brackets are really important in this example plus five times y, five y means five times y. Y has the value of five, and then don't forget the minus one. Okay, now we remember our order of operations. Remember bed mass, brackets first. Well, there's nothing to simplify within the brackets, right? A negative two can't be simplified, a five can't be simplified. Brackets, exponents, let's deal with the exponents now. So I'm gonna do negative two squared. So I'll write the negative three here. Negative two squared means negative two times negative two, which is positive four. Now with bed mass, you can do some steps in your head, right? I'm gonna do negative 12 plus 25 minus one. And does that give me, what did you guys say, 12? Um, is it 13? Yep, looks like you guys were correct. Very nice. 
And that's, I hope you used good form, okay? So your teacher doesn't have any excuse to take off any marks. Um, Eason, are you okay with that one? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Let's see, guys, we're almost done. You've been doing really well so far. I'm so impressed. You guys are so advanced. Um, let me see. Okay, that this will be our last question. Might as well try this, okay? Simplify and then evaluate. And all of the questions we've had only involve adding and subtracting like terms, okay? We haven't multiplied them. We'll do that on Wednesday. I'm not sure what the answer is yet, but seems like you guys aren't too confident with these questions, which, which just means you need more practice. Meta, you're probably right, I'm sure. Okay, yep. Okay, let's see what's going on. Okay, so watch. Um, Eason, oops, sorry about that. Eason, do you want to um, walk me through this? Why is that happening? There. Do you feel comfortable walking me through this or do you want me to just do it? Uh, I, I can walk it. Okay, tell me what to write. Four. Oh, I think your mic doesn't work. Darn it. Eason, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, keep going. I can hear you now. So 4x to the power 2. Yeah, or you can just say squared. Yep, yeah, squared. So do I... So x is minus oh. 1. So yeah, but don't worry about is... that. First, you have to expand and simplify. So you're multiplying everything in the first brackets by the number one, distributive property. Minus x2, x squared. xy minus xy. Plus one. Yeah, very good. Now open up the second brackets. There's a negative one 
in front of the second brackets. That means negative one times everything in the second brackets, okay? Negative x squared. Nice. Minus two x y. Yep, very good. Plus two. Excellent. Now keep simplifying. Oh, that's okay, Amanda. That's okay, guys. I know sometimes the internet can be annoying. Uh, so Easton, now combine with addition or subtraction your like terms, okay? So 3x squared. Nice. Plus 3. Uh, uh, minus 3xy. Yeah, minus and guys, make sure your x's are curved, like mine are. Like this one wasn't so good, but whatever. And plus then those three. constants, yeah, plus three. Now you can do the substituting part. So X is negative one, keep the brackets around it, minus three times negative one times two plus three. Okay, and you just take over, you use bed mass here. I'll just take over now, okay, Ethan? Thanks, that was good though, that was very good. So first I'm gonna do the exponents what I have to do first. So I have negative one squared is negative one times negative one, which is positive one. Hey, I can do a few steps in my head. So I get three times, well, you know what? Let me just write it out like this. You know, I can do this all right now, okay? Negative three times negative one times positive two. That ends up being a positive, oops, you don't like that. Positive six, right? And then we have our plus three. This becomes three times one, which is just three. Three plus six plus three. You guys were very right to say 12. Okay, good stuff. Okay, we made it to the end of the lesson and you guys did really well. The homework is in the um, Google Classroom. And I, I think I've put the solutions there as well. I'm not sure for this lesson, but Moving forward, it'll always have the page, the questions from the textbook, plus the solutions for you. So please make sure you do that before Wednesday, okay, guys? It won't be too much. Are you guys good? Yeah, okay, awesome. You did really well. Now you can go enjoy the rest of your day. You did really well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks for your, thanks for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, good luck.